How is it going, guys? And welcome back to Bielfi's Forgotten, the series where I look at underused and not often talked about pieces of gear to determine whether or not they deserve to be remembered within the modern meta of the game or should be left behind and forgotten. And since it's that time of year, we are going to be taking a look at a couple spooky guns in this next week. And starting us off will be the Fearmonger. If you would like to farm a Fearmonger for yourself, first we want to make sure that you have Bloody Harvest enabled, and once you have that, there's two ways of going about it. Either you can farm Loot Ghost, which is a pretty good way of doing it actually, you can either go to the Strap Trap Nest if that's available to you, or you can just take on a Circle of Slaughter. I personally have the best luck with the Slaughter Shaft, however, pretty much any of them work really well. The other option, of course, is farming Captain Haunt himself. There's no super easy way of doing this, you kind of just have to follow the mission every single time go through heck, kill haunt, repeat until you get it. However, the drop rate is pretty good. You can combine these two methods though, and go to a circle of slaughter, gather your ghost goo for the mission, probably get a couple loot ghosts while you do that, and then go to Maurice and farm. Fearmonger is a legendary Hyperion shotgun with incredibly high damage. The Fearmonger only drops as a times four and can come in any element. Projectile count can actually increase by up to three depending on how much terror you have stacked on yourself. This weapon did have one buff to it, a 355% weapon damage increase, and it was also supposed to increase the pellets that terror gen would give you, however this doesn't seem to have ever taken effect. Fearmonger fires out of course 4 projectiles, up to 7 depending on how much terror you have. It uses 2 ammo per shot, and these projectiles are stickies, so you fire them, they do damage, they stick into the target, after a few more seconds, they do more damage. Fearmonger also has this funky firing pattern where it's kind of like a square that oscillates, which means that it does actually have like a sweet spot sort of distance. But of course, the Fearmonger has really good synergy for terror focused builds. It also does splash damage, meaning it has very good synergy with Amar and Moe's, but this gun just does a crazy amount of damage as is as well. You don't need a terror build for this to actually function incredibly well. This gun is strong as fuck. And as I mentioned earlier, when this got buffed, I already thought it was strong. I thought this was a good gun, and then it got a 355% weapon damage increase. So this thing hits like a fucking truck. It fucking slaps so hard. And then you get the three extra project- you go from four projectiles to seven projectiles, all of which are stickies, all of which have a decent impact damage, and a high after damage, they go boom. It's fucking nuts. It does so much damage, it's insane. That being said, it does have a downside, and that is that it consumes ammo incredibly quick. It's also kind of hard to aim sometimes, especially when you get terror stacked, because terror decreases your accuracy, so if you're using this with a terror build, it gets even harder to actually hit all of these pellets onto something. Now usually, I would say that these downsides do kind of suck, but honestly, I think this is a Hellwalker. It was buffed while already being kind of decent still, and it was buffed huge. This thing does Hellwalker damage easily, if not more. Which low aside to say I did the math and it does actually do more when at 7 projectiles, and I'm pretty sure it does more when you account for the stickies, even at 4. So the accuracy penalty is barely an issue at all, you don't even really have to hit every projectile to do a lot of damage. However, the ammo consumption can be a major, major problem. And again, usually I'd say that would be enough to kind of bring this gun down for me. But the damage is worth it, man. Like, I can't, I can't give up that fight. Look at it. Look at the fucking damage. What do you, what do you want from that? Just get a cut purse launch pad. That's it. That's all you need. You get a cut purse launch pad, you just slam every once in a while, you're fine. It's worth the effort. This thing is fucking nuts. Now, trust me, this isn't going to be a recurring thing where I'm just like, hey, this gun has ammo consumption issues. Get a cut purse launch pad. No, I don't want to look at gear that has to rely on something else to fix a problem that it has and be like, yeah, this is good. This is great. And not ignore knowledge that it does have that downside. This does have that downside, but again, the damage fucking makes up for it 10 times over. But that'll about do it for this one. I hope you guys enjoyed. Please like, comment, subscribe, all of that, and I'll see you guys in the next one.